So last month I shared with you guys a little short I did out in the desert with some dancer friends of mine and this amazing lens with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K using only the power of the moonlight. So much of what I love about this video is the aesthetic. The characteristics of shooting wide open f0.95, you have a much softer image, it's dreamy. There's all these characteristics that you don't normally get when you shoot it like f5.6. f0.95 is a really tricky aperture to film anything in. If I were to film you right now straight on, your eyes would be in focus, but nothing else. So how do you nail focus with such thin margin for error on this blazing fast, super expensive lens, or even on this kind of affordable blazing fast lens? The answer is autofocus. Just autofocus, no. First of all, I do not own this lens. I rented this lens. This lens is like $11,000 on its own. And then it had a $5,000 rehousing job where they put all these fancy gears, they measured all the distances, and they changed everything over to T-stops. I ended up renting it for 295 bucks from ShareGrid, which is like peer-to-peer -peer rental stuff. ShareGrid is a great way for you guys to earn a little extra income renting out your gear that's just sitting on the shelf. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I left links down below. ShareGrid, you better pay me some money for saying that So, how do we nail razor-thin focus on these lenses? All right, there's two ways to do this. There's the professional way with a focus puller, first AC, and marks for talent. That's the Hollywood gold standard. Or there's my way. $169 DJI Ronin S follow focus. This is so easy to set up. Now what's dope about these lenses is they're already housed with gears and they match perfectly with the follow focus, so you're good to go. But if you're using a lens that doesn't have this, DJI includes these bands pop right on. The reason why I like the DJI Ronin S and the follow focus is because to program the in points and out points takes like 10 seconds. You have this thing mounted, all you have to do is plug it into the 12 volt down here and then hit this button twice. Oh my God. To be honest with you, I shot one night with the Jeune Crane 2 and the follow focus and one night with the Ronin S follow focus. Whereas I like how the Jeune Crane handles the heavier weight of the camera, this follow focus, look how fast that is racking focus, lightning quick. Not that you need it that fast, cause it's more like, it's like that. Still pretty awesome. Okay, so out of all the monitors that I have, the one that I'm gonna use for this build is a small HD focus. Mostly because it has a incredible zoom. I mean, I don't wanna rely on focus peaking. It's gonna be too dark, there's not a lot of contrast. Oh, you want a 280 times zoom? No problem. At that point, all you can see is grain, but you'll know if it's in focus. Okay, so this may be obvious, but I staged a lot of the shots with talent to run parallel. So talent is walking, camera is walking with them. I keep the distance the exact same, that way I only have to set focus once, and then I kind of gauge the distance as we come along. It made my job easier to pay attention to the performance rather than worry about if they were in focus or not. For close-ups where the shallow depth of field is unforgiving, it's definitely harder. At this point, I just kind of prioritize what I want in focus. Most of the time with performances, it's gonna be the eyes. They're the window of the performance. You get a lot of the information from the scene from their reaction shots, what they're thinking about, all the stuff that's going on behind the eyes. That's the important thing. Now with close-up shots, I'm instructing the talent to give smaller movements and then I'm blocking focus on them and I'm just leaning left and leaning right. Just little tiny movements and that is just enough. So well, here we have Talent, he's being very cooperative today. His eyes are in focus, everything else is out of focus, including the tip of his nose. If I scoot back about five feet, now the tip of his nose is in focus and his eyes are in focus. Now in this example, we're actually talking about hyperfocal distance and picking an imaginary spot between the eyes and the nose and splitting the focus between the two. 
Now, this is a basic observation. Many of you guys already know this. As the subject moves further and further away from the camera, closer to infinity, the plane of focus, what our eyes perceive as in focus, gets bigger and more forgiving, regardless of the aperture. What's actually happening is our eyes are unable to perceive what is in focus or not as the subject gets smaller and smaller away. So this is a really good tactic to keep in mind the next time you're composing these low light shots. Put that subject way out there. See if you can tell the story further away. While these shots are incredible, if you're watching on a small screen, chances are you can't tell if it's in focus or out of focus. If I were to take this same exact short and blow it up on a movie theater screen, there would be glaring moments not hitting focus at all. And that's because what we perceive as in focus is subjective to the final output and the final viewing of the project. What is the final viewing of your project gonna be? If it's gonna be on the phone, then you could probably do more creative, risky things and get away with it. But if it's gonna be for television or film, then you might not wanna shoot lower than f2.8. Most TV and film is shot from f2.8 to 5.6 for a reason. Now, a lot of you guys asked why I didn't just shoot on a speed booster. And to be honest with you, I didn't do the math. I didn't think it was gonna be nearly as bright as an F0.95, but the truth is I was wrong. Uh, a speed booster XL 0.64 matched with a 1.4 cannon, not even the fastest cannon glass there is, 1.4 is gonna give you a brighter exposure than F0.95. I think it comes in at like F0.9. I'm game. The reason why I rented this lens is because legendary, I never shot on it. I wanted to see what it was all about. But I got a video around the corner that has some very interesting affordable lenses that in terms of T-stops, the amount of light that they let in, I think you'd be very, very surprised at how they compete with this bad boy right here. I know, more empty promises. It's around the corner. This is Josh Joe saying thank you very much. Stay creative. Go make some art. Oh, shit.